it were to come about that I would become Captain America, because I think it's very important. Um, you know, representation is very important and not so much just for little black boys, but you know, little Asian boys, little white boys, you know, this is gonna raise conversations in every household. Tell me about some interesting fan interactions you probably <laughs> Because I assume you probably did like Comic Con, those kind of things. Did you mm -hmm. participate in those? So, like, what are some memorable fan encounters that you've had? Well, you know, it's funny because I see all these other actors and they're like, oh, you know, he's so sexy and he's so cute and he's so this and that. And I just get like middle aged men that won't leave me alone. And everybody that knows me knows I hate dudes. Like I just, I just hate dudes in my circle, you know? So it, 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 that can be very challenging when, you know, no matter where you go, there's always some dude who's like my age, our age. And he's like, yo, can I hang with you? Can I be down? Can I buy you a drink? Can I get you? Can I sit with you? Can I talk to you? I don't want to leave. Like I've seen dudes push their girls out the way to get to me blows my mind. But you know, I, I've done enough comp. There was one Comic Con we did. I think it was Chicago, and you know, you have these uh, like these groups from other countries that literally get together, fifty of them, on the same flight in the same hotel just to come to Comic Con to meet you. And there was this one girl. She was. Uh, oh, this is an even better one. So uh, about. Three years ago, I was in Vancouver shooting um, Alter Carbon. And there was this restaurant I would go to all the time because they had amazing oysters. And I had my seat at the bar. Nobody would bother me. I would get two or three dozen oysters and enjoy my lunch. One day, I'm sitting at the bar, and there's this little girl. She's little. She's like 25. And she's like hitting herself and clapping. And she's like, ah, ah. Ah, ah. So I'm like, you know, I'm I'm trying to be PC. I'm like, oh my God, like she's she's special needs. So, you know, I'm like, yo, I go over to, I'm like, how you doing? It's nice. And she keeps looking at me, right? And every time she looks at me, she would like make these weird sounds and start clapping. So I go over to her and I'm like, hey, how you doing? And she's like, ah, ah. I'm like, nah, just chill out. It's okay. It's okay. I'm like, you, um, you want to take a picture? She goes, oh, photo, photo. I'm like, yeah, 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 we, that's cool. That's cool. We could take a picture. I was like, but you, you know, you have to be discreet because I don't want everybody in here to see it. So I'm going to hold the camera down here and we're going to take the picture, but you can't make any noise or say nothing because everybody's going to see. She's like, oh, ah, ah, ah. So I take the picture. I give her the camera. And I'm like, now you get photo approval, trying to be the nice guy. I'm like, you get photo approval. So you look at the picture and tell me if you like it. So I'm standing here. She's sitting here. She looks at the camera and she goes, ah, ah, ah. She starts crying. She turns to me and pukes all over me. Grabs Are you her stuff me? and runs out of the restaurant. A fan threw up on you. I was like, never again will I do this. Never again will I put myself in. I'm covered in all the oysters and French fries and oyster rolls that she just ate. All because I was trying to be nice. You're that beloved. <laughs> <laughs> that, you know, complimentary. <laughs> It's not the every worst. day somebody is so excited about meeting you that they throw up on you. But what made me so mad, she was with her friend and her friend's like, I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry. I don't know what happened. And I'm like, yo, like, shouldn't you go after her? Like, you know, I, she's special needs. She shouldn't be out on the street by herself. And she's like, special needs? That's my boss. No, she's not. Then I got really mad. <laughs> <laughs> never again never again oh my goodness never again I'm not, 
I need to know now what line of work was she in? Yeah. <laughs> right? I'm like, what? <laughs> Who was who? What department was she running? <laughs> you know? Like what? All righty then. Uh, yeah, that was the worst one. That that that's pretty hard to top. As I said, <laughs> Marvel fans, they are definitely a, a different breed. Um, now, as everybody knows who's seen the movie, and if this is a spoiler alert, that's just your problem. You should have seen <laughs> Endgame by now. So, as everyone knows, at the end of Endgame. You are past the shield. So are you the black Captain America? Is that what we're doing? Yes. Come on. (laughs) 2020 was the race for reckoning, dog. We need this. We need this. No, well, (laughs) if you, when you watch Endgame at the end of the movie, I never accept the shield. When Cap gives it to me, I say, it feels like it's someone else's. It feels like it's yours. You know, so the show is more so about picking up where Endgame left off. So it's about us living in a post blip society and trying to figure out what our new normal is, you know? So much like us living in COVID, when all of this is over and we're all vaccinated, we're gonna have to figure out what our new normal is, you know? Like I want no dudes in my circle because I don't want that new dude Corona, you know? So it's, it's along the lines of that. We never saw, you know, this pandemic hitting you know, and being our blip in this day and age, but it's definitely turned into that. Is America ready for a black Captain America? You know what? I I, I am very, very uh, optimistic about the uh, reaction of um, if it were to come about that I would become Captain America, because I think it's very important. Um, you know, representation is very important and not so much just for little black boys, but you know, little Asian boys, little white boys, you know, this is gonna raise conversations in every household. You know, every dad is gonna have to sit down with his son. Every mom is gonna have to sit down with her daughter, you know, much like, you know, my boys, you know, they watch Wonder Woman, they watch, you know, and and they, they, they love it. You know, they appreciate the fact that she's not a female superhero, she's a superhero. You know, and that's a conversation that we had, you know, like girls can kick ass just as good as dudes and and they should appreciate that and watch it for what it is. If, you know, if uh, if a green dude can kick ass, so can a black dude and so can a female. Because of obviously the unfortunate passing of, of Chadwick Boseman, when, you know, we look around the Marvel Universe, there's obviously you, there's Don Cheadle and there was Chadwick. With Chadwick being gone, um, does that now put your character as being one of the major ones that's black in this universe? Does that give you any extra sense of responsibility at all? Of course, um, of course. I think, um, you know, I knew Chad for a very long time. We met in 1998, 1999, when he was at Howard. Um, and, I've, I've, you know, I, I knew him for a long time. And I'm, I'm proud to say, you know, in his legacy, you know, he, he left a generational turn of acceptance, of understanding. And I think that's why 2020 was so profound in so many different ways. And I think that's why when you saw most of the protests, a vast majority of those people protesting were white. You know, when you look around the world, a vast majority of those people protesting were white. So <clears throat> the responsibility for me is if, if, you know, would would just be keeping his legacy and his traditions that we've talking about, keep talked about, keep that going and keep keep it alive. You know, Chad was a phenomenal uh, human being and he was a beautiful brother and he did everything the right way. And, you know, that's something, you know, even down to him passing, you know, nobody knew he was sick. You know, his 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 private life was private. His circle was tight and everything that people will never know the amount of, you know, philanthropic work, the amount of charity work, you know, the amount of support that Chad gave people because he didn't do it for press. He didn't do it to be acknowledged. He did it because he was a good good human being. And, you know, that's something that with the Falcon, you know, I definitely tried to lean towards and carry, carry on that part of his legacy. 
Um, there has been a lot of conversation about what should happen to uh, his role as Black Panther, what should mm-hmm. happen to T'Challa. I know how, how what happens in the comic book, of course, but uh, as somebody who knew him, do you think Chadwick would want his role to be recast? No, you can't recast it. I mean, he, he did that role in a way it'll never be done again. And I would hate for an actor to have to pick up the baton that he left behind because, you know, there's no... There's no question he was a dynamic figure and an amazing actor. And just looking at the reaction to Black Panther, there's nobody that could bring the grace to that role that he did. So I don't, I, I wouldn't want to see, you know, um, Anthony Mackie as Black Panther. That would be awful, you know? Well, you already Captain America, so you kind of can't be double duty. You can't get all the checks, Anthony. You, you can't, can't get all the checks. All right? <laughs>